That's Robert Wickens. Jake, he moves from fourth uh, into the fourth position and is now looking for third. Racing isn't even a passion for me. It's, it's my life. It's really all I know. Right now it's Rossi the leader, then it's Power. Wickens on the end of big contact. Big contact, car in the air. It's Robert Wickens that spins. Ryan Hunter Ray was just underneath him. James Hedgecliffe involved. We have a major mess here exiting turn number two at the Pocono Raceway. I think all, all drivers have to have that, that hunger, that killer instinct almost. I think that's what sets apart the, the good from the great and the great from the elite is, you know, what are they willing to do to, to get that result? The car of Robert Wickens made contact. He got airport, got into the catch fence, rolled to the inside. A number of cars involved in a spectacular crash here at Pocono Raceway. I'm Robert Wickens. I race for Brian Herta Autosport in the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge Series with Hyundai in an Elantra and TCR car. And I'm a professional race car driver. I came to the team the same year that Robert came to the team, which would have been 2022. Robert was brought in to drive the 33 car. I was very fortunate enough to have Brian reach out to me as almost a cold call. You know, he's just like, driver to driver, do you want to race again? And I was like, of course I do. I've been trying to for some time now, but struggling to find traction to make the next step to even know what it looks like. He's like, cool, come to Mid-Ohio, May 4th, we're going to get you in a race car. That really not only got the fuel going again for me, but it, it proved to myself that I could still do it. One thing led to another, and Hyundai was able to jump on board and sign me as a driver with Brian Hurd Autosport for the 2022 season. Robert Wickens in the number 33. And they've won that category as well. The last two years were have been, I think, quite strong. My, my first year back to racing in 2022, we won two races. We got on the podium in my first race back from injury in Daytona, which was amazing. Going into 2023, the goal was we just need to be steady, consistent, and just bring home the results. He's on the cute angle. Wiggins is gonna roll the outside. Myself and my teammate, Harry Gottsacker, we won the championship last year in 2023 without a single race win, which I think has not been done very often in, in the IMSA series. As a driver, I've never had the opportunity to defend a championship before. The season has gone to the number 33 crew, a model of consistency and teamwork. I don't think I'd be where I am today if it wasn't for Carly by my side. She was the one that gave me the opportunity to achieve what I was trying to achieve. It's amazing to see how much he's accomplished. He's the most determined person I've ever met. After the accident happened, like one of the first things he said when he woke up from his coma was, when do I get back in a race car? That's his life, racing's his life, so it's my life now. I, I wouldn't change it. I knew he wanted to get back in a race car. He thought that he was gonna be racing the next weekend. You gotta have hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the system that we've been using the last couple of years has been great for the category that it's in. You know, the way brake systems work, there's a lot of feel that goes into braking a car, especially from a high speed down to what you know we would call apex or roll speed. And it really comes in the modulation phase. There's a lot of feel that a driver can do with their leg that you know, without the use of the legs, there's only so much force they can generate with their hands. The system that was in the car is purely hydraulic and you can control, quote, the boost. It's just, yes, I'm providing gain or no, I'm not. There is no finesse. Well, I've been constantly chasing that, that feel that I've been trying to get and what I've had for 20 odd years with my legs up on the steering wheel. The idea of developing a new system with Bosch, I think the catalyst for that is in IMSA GTP racing, they're doing what we call brake by wire. If you look at the GTP class, they have the same electric brake system from Bosch in the rear axle that I'm using in my TCR car now on front and rear axle. So the technology has always existed. It's just how do you implement that technology? Let's take the limitations of the pure hydraulic system, put the electronics in it so we can get some of that, get that feel back, help him with the modulation phase. Generations ago, 
you know, this technology didn't exist. Electric braking systems didn't exist. Looking at in 2024, where we are right now, and what, at what Bosch is able to provide for me, I feel like it's gonna create almost endless opportunity. We're gonna take it on track for the first time. So, so far today we've just been checking some boxes, making sure that the system's operating as it should, just going up and down the pit lane, back and forth, basically. The whole goal for today is just showing that we have a strong, reliable system. my ring and the car stops and it's uh, it's already I think it's an improvement on latency it's an improvement on sensation on, on what it feels like through my hands we're learning a lot <laughs> in terms of feeling confident with the system like that's like priority one for me yeah is to absolutely. get some movement on the ring okay to help understand kind of where I am you know, I think the biggest improvement so far is the reduced latency in the system. So the old system that I used for my handbrakes was uh, I had a pneumatic actuator to help me achieve brake pressure. The difficulties there is it takes a certain amount of time for the pressure to build and to move uh, an actuator to push the able-bodied brake pedal down. I couldn't react at the rate that I wanted to react to because of the latencies in the brake system. So immediately it seems like the latency in this system is not there with the disability and, and losing those, that, that feeling in the legs and losing the feeling you know, in the lower half of the body, that is a huge feedback loop that drivers use to be successful. To me, if you say, what's the biggest advantage of the system? Because of the mechanical system, there's only so much feel you're gonna get in the hands and being able to do that and sensing that and getting the feedback. You know, to me, that it is in the modulation phase because that's the key. For, my opinion to produce lap time. All I've been trying to achieve from, we, from when we started this journey was I want the same braking sensation that an able body driver has with their foot. Even like an able body driver, like you don't want to push against a wall on like a brake pedal. Right? Right. Like you want some displacement. Yeah, because the movement in the wheel is going to be the same once we get the physical simulator circuit in yep. there and then we can tune the decel response. I mean, the, the great thing about electronic braking systems is you can fiddle around with a lot of settings and, and change a lot of parameters. So for me, trying to get really whatever feeling I want um, can all be done through software. I'm calibrating the EBS modules. They're a little out of the window right now in terms of calibration. They're not meeting exactly the target request that we're sending it. So I have to tweak the calibration to make it match the target more cleanly and give a better response to not only our pressure request, but what Robbie's trying to feel. Whether it's in TCR, GTD, GTP racing, wherever he, you know his career elevates as he elevates, I mean, this system as a whole will help him be successful, not just at this level, but at the levels above it. with this system and now it's just I'm hopefully just a normal driver trying to seek every opportunity I can and just implementing a new brake system to go with it. Well, I would love from when my whole journey is done to have made a much more approachable sport for, for disabled people and to show that an uh, injury doesn't have to define who you, who you are and if you want to be a race car driver go be a race car driver. I think one of the first things I said to him after he woke up from his coma in the accident was I can't wait to find out why all of this happened. As I truly do believe like everything happens for a reason in life. I just kept thinking like, what, why did this happen? And, and what is gonna come of it? What good is gonna come of it? And I think that's where we are now is that Rob's changing the way for disabled people and there's a greater meaning to all of it and to the struggles. This is really step one of the, of the next chapter of my, of my new motorsports career racing with hand controls. And you know, with the previous system, I was always almost at a ceiling in, in the TCR category with the hand control systems that we were using where frankly this Bosch system is going to 
make that ceiling a lot higher and, and potentially unlimited.